How are you all today? It's Motivation Monday. You're here for our weekly Motivation Monday live video here from me, Lisa Barwise. And I'm chatting to you today about my one of the topics that have come up so much over the last two weeks that I thought I'd best actually address it as I do via the video, which is all about over exercising, yeah? Uh, or under exercising, or how much exercise should I be doing? And we're gonna actually kind of debunk the, a few myths as always, and we're gonna provide you some trusted facts on body shape change and on achieving your goals through exercise and nutrition, because we're also gonna talk about that today. So as people are joining in live, I would love to know where it is you're coming from in the world. Do write in the comments below, because um, we, we're completely global now, we have a global community. Um, and as we're coming in live, I will introduce myself. My name is Lisa Barwise. I consider myself a wellness alchemist. That means I'm the kick-ass catalyst in the transformation of women around the world. Strong of mind, body, and character. I'm the creator of Warrior Goddess Kettlebell Training and the Warrior Goddess Body Online Community and Tribe and our six-week challenge all about the transformations. Hello also on Instagram, which we're live on both today feeling very fancy with my technology. So let's get into it, right? Let's go straight into what we need to talk about today, which is over or under exercising, or what is the Goldilocks solution? Ha ha ha. Uh, not too hot, not too cold, but just right of exercise, okay? But I wanted to tell you this quote that I saw today that I loved, which said, do as much as necessary, not as much as possible. And that was by a guy called Henk Kry e Hehoff. <laughs> I think he might be Scandinavian with a name like that, but bless him. So do as much as necessary, not as much as possible. More is not better, it's just more, okay? And I think that there's, there's, there's a strong camp of women, especially, that fall into this over-exercising category um, because of something that goes on in terms of their motivation. Now, I am not an over-exerciser, have never been an over-exerciser, and sometimes I do think to myself, how can people be over-exercisers? Because I am on the other camp of the lazy camp, yeah? Um, I've um, admitted to this many a time before, I'm probably the laziest fitness professional that you'll ever meet, and people think you shouldn't say that, but I think it's important because of what we're about to talk about right now, okay? Is that... It, my laziness, my lack of motivation and my lack of intrinsic motivation has made me the, the seeker of the most effective ways to do workouts, the most effective and efficient ways to reach my body shape change goals, but to be able to get strong in the shortest, quickest amount of time, being the most effective, effective and efficient that I can be. Yeah. So I want to talk about this thing called diminishing returns and also what causes a woman to want to overexercise? And we're talking about women here because that's who that's who I talk about because that's who my tribe is all about. So diminishing returns, doubling your effort does not double your results when it comes to um, exercise. And there is a uh, a tipping point, just like that Goldilocks solution, whether it's too hot or too cold or just right. And there is that tipping point and point of diminishing returns when it comes to workouts. So, you know, why do we do four times 20 swings, for example, versus, you know, 10 times 20 swings? Why, why do you think, I think a lot of the time people think, well, if I do 200 swings rather than 100 swings, surely doubling my efforts is going to double my results, but that's just not true. So when it comes to over-exercising, it's really about three things. Number one is about your intention. A lot of the time we we just don't know, right? We've never been taught, we've never we've never um, really studied exercise science, unless you're a personal trainer, you don't really go down and think about that. What you think is movement is good. I just need to get out there and do something, right? Also, if you're somebody who is a bit of a comfort eater or an overeater or, you know, you have these little conversations and these little loops and stories for yourself, sometimes you just think, I need to just run that off. I need to just burn that off, right? Um, which basically is using exercise as a punishment 
for what you've eaten. And that's the stem of a lot of exercise, over-exercise. So I'm going to talk to you about that. But the intention for why you exercise is the most important thing. So a lot of us don't have an intention. We don't stop and pause and go, right, I'm doing this training session today because these are my goals. A lot of the time we don't set goals. A lot of the time we just wing it. <laughs> Who is with me? How many of you right now are just winging it? Come on, come on, put some hands up, give me some emojis. You know for a fact that when you do your workouts, there's no set intention for what you're trying to achieve. You're kind of just winging it. And that's okay because you, you do what you can with what you've got up until the point that you know better. And guess what? I'm going to teach you how to know better, right? So setting the goal or setting your intention first starts with setting that goal, okay? You cannot achieve a goal if you don't like say what it is out loud. You can't you know, grow or change or be better unless you quantified what that is. So all of this starts with you understanding what is it that you want to achieve. So let's say, as both of, most of the ladies who, who start with me want to, and I dare say it because it drives me crazy, they want to lose a bit of weight, right? They don't really want to lose a bit of weight. Most of us know how to lose a bit of weight like that, right? We do. We know that if we stop eating the junk food and the takeaways and drinking the buckets and buckets of wine and eating lots and lots of crisps, if we cut all that back, we'll lose a bit of weight. We know that, right? I'm not here to teach granny to suck eggs. You guys know this information. However, that's not what you want. What you want is to change your body shape. You wanna have a body that you're proud of. You wanna feel it toned, have it, that's another word I don't like. You wanna to tone, you wanna to have lean muscle, you wanna have the, the shape and the curves and muscle curves in all the right places. You want a flat stomach, you want a lean midsection, right? You want all of these things. This is what we call body shape change. It's building lean muscle so that you can create muscle curves and sculpt out that body. It's not weight loss. Weight loss is where you lose your, your cheeks or the boobs go and you have no, you can't determine where the weight loss comes off. It just comes off where it comes off, right? This is how it works. So you want body shape change. So for body shape change, it's a two part process. So say for example, you want to drop a dress size, you want to tone your body, have a lean midsection and you want to feel strong. Okay, so you want to go from this size to a next size. You maybe want to drop X number of body fat. Then you, you determine strong by, I want to be able to do 10 push-ups or I want to be able to do X, Y, and Z. That's a goal, ladies. That is being intentional. That's being clear. That's giving yourself a, pla a path and a plan to achieve, all right? Working towards that path and plan will get you a body that you're proud of because part of the journey will get you there. So let's say that this is true. You wanna drop that dress size. You wanna do those 10 push-ups. You wanna feel strong and you wanna feel toned, right? That's your goal. If that is your goal, then you need to create an exercise plan to match that goal, all right? So how does that, what does that look like? So an exercise plan that matches your goal is simply knowing how much or how little exercise to do. But it has to be strength training. So if you are somebody who is the cardio queen, the cardio bunny, loves to um, go out for long runs, loves to do lots and lots of exercise, or, and this falls into the cardio queen bracket, that you love to do long hit trainings, that your strength training or your hit training takes you over 45 minutes. Okay, that's over 30 minutes of a workout and you do hour long workouts and then maybe you go and do an hour long cardio and then maybe you go and do a run later that day or you go for a walk. That is over exercising unless you have a specific plan. So for example, I'll give you an example where that's not over exercising. If you are a bodybuilder whose goal right now is to shred to get ready for a competition that's happening three months from now, you might be doing one hour of big heavy weight lifting hypertrophy as it's called, building that lean muscle mass, and you might do one to two hours of cardio on a Stairmaster or, or on an exercise bike or walking outside okay now that's three hours of exercise is that person over exercising not in that example because they have a specific goal that particular person is a physique athlete whose intention and goal is to look a certain way when they stand on stage and therefore it's not over exercising for you and me 
that's over exercising because it's not going to help us to achieve the goal that we want right now okay based on what we really want so can you achieve the body shape change that you want from four minutes per day with strength training yes so i i think it's so interesting that a lot of people have so much misconceptions and trepidations about working out because it stems from Jane Fonda. It's all her fault. Jane Fonda in the 1970s coined this phrase, no pain, no gain, right? And since then, women everywhere have been flinching going, uh, in order for me to get in shape, I need to knock my pan in for an hour, five, six times a week. I need to be going to gym and working out hard and pushing myself into the grindstone to achieve what I need to achieve. This is not true, okay? This is 100% not true. I do not believe in the no pain, no gain um, mantra, and it specifically doesn't work for women post 35 because of a little thing called stress, chronic stress, hormonal stress, okay? So what I teach and what works is a plan based on what you want to achieve in what time frame, where you're coming from in terms of have you been active or not been active? And if your goal is also strength in addition to body shape change, you need to match your workouts with your nutrition. Now that's a different video for a different day. <laughs> Let's just talk about the overexercising. However, we start with just four minute strength training workouts and most of our workouts never go beyond 30 minutes. And that includes the warm up and the cool down. Okay, why is that? because you need to understand the intentionality of the workout that you're doing. You can get an amazing strength training workout in 20 minutes as somebody who's more advanced. Somebody who's a complete beginner can get an amazing strength training workout in just four minutes, specifically using kettlebells or resistance bands are the two that we work with, but you can get an amazing workout in just four minutes. Then you might want to build that up to six minutes. You might want to then build that up to eight minutes. And you might then want to build it up to the holy grail of 12 minutes. But if you're a woman past 35, moving into your 40s, the most important thing about your exercise is learning when to push and when to rest. Because triggering the stress mechanism, which exercise is, is a delicate little balance and again a little Goldilocks solution, uh, gold, that Goldilocks solution, yeah? Uh, you know, too hot, too cold or just right. You need to find the right intensity, the right modality of the workouts and that is based on different things. So not only is it based on your intentions and your goals, but it's also where you are in your stage of life. Are you perimenopausal, menopausal, postmenopausal? If you are in your menstrual cycle, which phase of your menstrual cycle are you in? Because doing certain exercises during certain parts of your menstrual cycle can actually stop you from building lean muscle or cause you to put on more fat, okay? So if you're somebody whose goal it was be to burn fat and you're doing certain types of training during certain parts of your menstrual cycle, you're actually causing yourself more harm than good, okay? so. This is why it's a science, but also it's why it's individual to you. But it doesn't have to be hours along, knocking yourself, uh, knocking yourself in the pan. Does that make any sense? <laughs> knocking yourself at, out, knocking your pan in. Those are the two cliches, aren't they? Um, and also it has to be part of an overall plan and a goal, okay? So a lot, a lot of people then say to me, Lisa, but sure, it's better for me to do one hour of exercise a week at least. That's gonna be better for me. But again, it comes down to what's your intention. If you just want to feel good and to, and to do it for your mental health, if you wanna improve your mental health and move yourself away from anxiety, then obviously moving your body every day for 30 minutes or so is good for you, okay? If that's your goal, see how it comes back to that? If your intention is, I just wanna feel like I am doing something for me, I'm moving my body, I'm trying to feel less anxious, then of course going out for walks or doing a certain things are good for you. But then don't suddenly question, well, I'm not losing any weight or I'm not changing my shape or I'm not building any muscle because that wasn't your goal. So last week we talked about I did all the right things and I didn't lose any weight. This is what I'm talking about. I went on walks every day and didn't lose any weight. That wasn't your intention. If your intention for going for a walk is to lose weight, I can tell you that that's not the best exercise for you to do and doing cardio every single day for like going out for long one hour walks every day, even during what's going on right now, 
if your goal is to lose weight, that's not going to do it. In fact, it's probably going to cause your body more stress. It's going to impact your thyroid. You can talk to me about how that works. So what I'm trying to tell you is over-exercising and under-exercising all just comes down to what is your goal? What is it that you want to achieve? This is why I created a whole podcast called Goddess Got Goals. This is why I've created my whole life masterclass about how to get in the best shape yet. Because women don't set goals and we don't track and measure ourselves to, towards goals. So when it comes to exercise, how do we know if we're over-exercising or under-exercising if we didn't have a plan and a benchmark or a measurement tool to track that against? So here's my invitation to you. I am running my free live masterclass, how to get into the best shape yet from home with little or no equipment and definitely no added stress with results guaranteed and potentially for free this week. I'm gonna leave the link in here for you to register. You can come and hear exactly about the right sort of training, training to do for your goals, the right amount of time and how it's going to work, okay? If you are somebody who's like, beyond the, I wanna lose a little bit of weight, if you're that person, if you're somebody who's like, I want to move beyond just losing a little bit of weight, I want to get in my best shape yet, I want to lean my midsection, I want to feel strong, I want to feel in control and empowered by my body, and to get a body that I'm truly proud of, then this is what this free live masterclass is going to teach you. And I'm going to be there talking to you just like this, being able to explain it to you, breaking it down systematically, going a little bit into the science and the research and understanding the woman's body a little bit better to educate you and empower you so that you could figure out Am I over-exercising or am I under-exercising? But also, what are my goals? How am I going to achieve it? And can all of this been, be done from home? Yes, that's what it's all about. I have been teaching home-based workouts for over five years. Even though I have a studio based in Belfast, which is now closed, um, which has been open for the last three years, we have, I had an online pro, uh, program teaching what we teach for the last five years. And I have to tell you, home-based workouts beat studio-based workouts for results anytime. Mm -hmm. And you need to come over to our masterclass so I tell you why. So I'm going to leave this link in down below. Please come and join us. We've got a time to suit every single person based on where you are in the world. We've got a lot of ladies who have joined um, our tribe since from Australia and from America. Uh, we're truly global now. So times to suit everybody, days of the week to suit everybody, and your ability to interact and get the information so you can finally stop second guessing yourself, spinning those wheels, am I over-exercising, am I under-exercising, and you can find out just the Goldilocks solution, just the right amount of exercise, just getting your nutrition on point so that you can get the body shape that you've always wanted, to get into your best shape yet. So I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for joining me both here on Instagram and on Facebook. I can't wait to see you in that live masterclass. I will drop the links below. This is our final week of live masterclass, so don't miss out. I can't wait to see you over there. And I look forward to connecting with you all again, same time next week, 3 p.m. GMT for Motivation Monday. Enjoy the rest of your day, uh, whatever you're doing. And I will see you same time next week, or if not, in the inside of that masterclass. Peace.